So I've just parked up the old rusty John Claude Van Sexual and now we're going for a stealth camp. Howe! Welcome back to the Blot Outdoor Show guys. Yep, back out on another stealth camp. Today, I'm looking to do a stealth camp on a busy flyover, or in America, I think you call that an overpass. It's a busy road that goes over the railway line. I was out walking the dog yesterday, and I noticed this spot. Should be a good one. It's going to be hard to get onto it without being spotted because there's loads of cars about, loads of people around. Yeah. Local boy races out in force. <laughs> I saw more of the same guys. I've got some food to cook. I've got some whiskey to drink. Just a little bottle. It's only Thursday night. I normally do my stealth camping on a Saturday so I can get the video out on a Sunday. But it's Thursday now. I'll tell you the reason for that later on. How are them? Let's get moving. Ah. So we're just approaching the flyover now. First I want to show you something. Just over this wall. If you can remember the video where I camped next to the railway line. It was a few months ago. That's where I was down there on the other side of the tracks. I was sitting under that, well sitting under the bridge and I had the tent down by the side of it. It's a good spot, decent video. If you haven't watched it, you know what to do, man dingoes. Go back and check it out. But this is where I'm looking to get on the other side of the road and behind that barrier. I'll bring you back in a second when I'm ready to make a move for it. You know what I'm talking about. Right, that's it folks. Let's quickly get over. Get this fat lad over the fence. Over the railing. Oh. This is the way, guys. The way of the Mandingo. You better believe it is. get over before I get spotted from people down at the shops you've got a littles down there I mean guys I mean it's 
not the nicest spot in the world but I don't think there'll be anyone coming around here it's nice and flat I won't be able to use my tent because <coughs> I won't get the pegs in the ground but I bought my little bivvy which is tiny that's just like freestanding so fingers crossed there's no rain because I don't want to be stuck in the bivvy like a little coffin <sighs> anyway I'm gonna get this bag off I'll bring you a manding goes back in a winnet Woo! you know it makes sense right Okay then folks, so people are always asking us what do I have in my bag and how do I pack it? So I might as well show you. Now, don't take any tips or any notice of me about how my bag's packed, because I'm no expert at that. I just pack it the way, I, the way I like it, the way it suits me. You can pack your bags the way you want to. Don't copy off me, anyway. That's enough of me talking shit for now. I'm gonna show you what I've got. Here we go. Man thing goes. So I've got my waterproof jacket there, which I'm probably gonna need because it looks like it's gonna rain at some point. I've got my little bivvy there. You'll see that soon when it's all set up. I've got me seat there which falls down small into this bag always comes in handy when you're stealth camping and you're sitting around for hours on end it's nice to have the seat to sit and have a few candingos <laughs> i've got my foil mat i normally put that down well i always put that down on the bottom inside my tent or bivy my pillar down slippers in there which is going to keep my feet really warm later on I've already got my down pants on underneath me tracky bottoms I've got my hat some spare socks some warm gloves because it's going to get cold later on you better believe it is man thing goes put that there I've got me air mat burghouse air mat that takes up quite a bit of room but something you need I've got a spare jacket in there a down jacket the old one I always use it just for when I'm stealth camping pardon me when I get cold I'll stick that on later on and I'll leave it on for when I go to bed the old stinking four season sleeping bag it's all ripped stinks of wet dog off when I've had messy sleep with us I still haven't washed it yet <laughs> it'll ding dang do for this man dingo you better believe it will we'll put that there alrighty let's have a look and see what else I've got me head torch me power bank another torch there just put them back in the bag quickly because I don't need them out yet right I've brought a tarp in case it starts raining it doesn't look like there's anywhere where I can fasten it so I probably won't be able to use it if it starts lashing down and I've got my seat there, so I might just have to <laughs> pull it over the top of us and hope it stops raining. Water, water, bigger. More water, more bigger. Hey. Nearly done. Got 
the food and the snacks. Some soup for later. Cook flavour soup. Very amazing. More snacks, more food. I'll show you all that later. All my bits and pieces. Bits and pieces. All my bits and pieces. Pans, cups, coffees, stove, miniature waski, little knife and fork set. That's about it, man, dingoes. All righty. Put some stuff away. I'm going to tidy up. I'm going to get me bivvy up. And I will bring you back soon. Oh, yes. You. Better believe I will. <laughs> Right. Okay guys, I'm going to show you my very dodgy setup at night. It started to rain and I was thinking, oh god, I'm going to get soaking here. So I just got the tarp out, strapped it up as good as I could, and got this scrap, which was just on the grass down there. The danger there is, if the wind picks up, my tarp's probably going to get ripped to bits but it's a risk I'm going to have to take because it's definitely it's definitely going to rain tonight and by the look of these clouds it's going to rain pretty heavy so anyway <laughs> I love all the experts saying you shouldn't be doing that you shouldn't be putting your tarp like that well man then goes that's just the way it goes there's me seat under there. There's me bivvy down there. I'll bring you around the other side and we'll have a look at all my bits and pieces. Now I received a parcel during the week from a guy called Nick Ball and he put all sorts of bits and pieces in he's the guy responsible for giving me the old cock flavor what was it cock flavor noodle soup so with that i'm going to add some chicken some chicconi chicconi waver i'll hide one of these i'll chuck one of these bags of microwave vegging as well just you know, just to make a decent meal out of it. Um, the guy that sent us the, the box, the parcel, he also sent us some jerky and a miniature bottle of Laphroaig, which I'll happily drink later on for a little chest warmer. I won't do a review on that because I've already reviewed it before. What I will be reviewing tonight is this, which has been kindly given to me from Barry Homewood. Cheers, bars, mate. Hold on, I'm trying to work out how you pronounce it. Ock Nagy. Ock Nagy, blended Scotch whiskey. Stick around for the world famous Waski with you. Coming later on, guys. Yeah, so my other snacks, I've got some German salami and cheese. I've got some German Brunswick ham, we're going all German tonight and a couple of cheap bottles of German beer, lager from Aldi's, cheap and nasty but it'll do, I know I'm at work in the morning <laughs> and I shouldn't be drinking, I don't normally drink during the week but you've got to have a drink when you're camping haven't you anyway I think I've covered all my food and drink, oh that doesn't sound good with this top, sounds like it's going to rip Okay, I'll bring your manding was back soon. We'll answer a question and I'll tell you why I'm camping on a Thursday night instead of a Saturday night. Bring you back in a minute. Nice.
cheap Aldi's German lager. One pound twenty-nine a bottle, I think it was. Let's see what it's like. It's all right. I've had worse. Not the best camp I've ever made, but it'll have to do because it's just a matter of time before it lashes down, like I've already said. Anyway, while I'm sitting chilling, I might as well explain to you while I'm camping now on a Thursday night. Normally, I camp on a Saturday night, sometimes on a Friday night, but 99 times out of 100, I camp on a Saturday night, and then when I get home on the Sunday, that's when I edit the video ready to go on YouTube on the Sunday night but this weekend early on Saturday morning me and my wife and my son were going to Blackpool for a couple of nights in a caravan my stepdaughter and her boyfriend and their kids them will already be down there so we are gear crashing their caravan cheers Brogan and Carl for that I saw I wouldn't have been able to get a video made this is the only way I could have got a video made by doing it on the Thursday night and then tomorrow morning which is obviously Friday morning I start work at 7 in the morning so I need to get up at half 5 get packed away go and pick little Mick up because we work together and then off to work 7 o'clock in the morning and then when I finish work on the Friday afternoon, three o'clock. I'll then edit the video. I'll get it all edited and all ready and, pardon me, completed on Friday night. So I've got it ready to go to YouTube on Sunday. <laughs> oh, that's gassy that. <laughs> to be honest, I should have just given it a miss. <laughs> I should have just thought, ah, oh, it's one of them weekends where I'm going away with the family. But I know you man dingoes enjoy watching these videos. I get a lot of nice messages off people, you know, just seeing how much they really enjoy it. I also get messages off people saying, you know, they're going through a bad time, they're not feeling very well, or they might have lost a loved one. And when they watch the Blot Outdoor show, it cheers them up and it, it makes them happy. And that for me means more than anything. So if I can get out on a Thursday night and do this camp, I know I've got work in the morning, but it's no big deal. If I can do that and it keeps a few people happy, well, it's happy dingoes as far as I'm concerned. I'll I'll try my best to get the videos out for you every week, guys. Anyway, <laughs> that's enough for me talking absolute shite. You know the score on the Blood Outdoor Show, guys. I'm going to sit back, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this bottle, and then... I'm going to have a little snackaroni. Bring it back in a minute. Next train, 
coming in at Mandingo Town. Choo choo! <laughs> Jeez, man, dingoes. On my second bottle now. Only brought two. But I've got two little miniature waskies, which I'm looking forward to having. A nice little chest warmer, and then another one for the world famous Weaview. So while I'm sitting chilling out now, why not answer a little question? Somebody asked us this question weeks and weeks ago But it was just like one person so I had a lot more questions that were more popular But over this last two or three weeks, there's a few people asked this same question. So here we go The question is Will I ever do any videos? abroad Whether it's like in Europe or America or Canada, you know, just anywhere outside of the UK Well, I would, <laughs> I would do it, but I think I'm a million miles off anything like that at the minute. Um, I normally just stealth camp local, you know, around the city of Sunland or in the town of Sayham, which is just down the road. And when I go wild camping, I go to the Lake District. Sometimes I go to Northumberland, but normally the lakes. But, um, there's there's loads of places I can do in the UK first for stealth camping before I go abroad I know I'm going to have to go to different towns and cities apart from Sunderland and Sayham soon because when I run out of ideas I'm going to have to start and you know go a bit further afield but talking shit going back to the, the question yeah I would love to go abroad and I probably will in time but my channel still just it's still just a little channel. Although it's, I'm slurring my words, I've only had two bottles, bottle and half. I'm slurring my words already. It's still just a little channel. Although it's doing really well at the minute, and I am over the moon. Thank you, to all you leg, all you legends who watch. I think I would have to wait until my channel got a lot bigger, like maybe it's a hundred k. Then I might think about doing some abroad. I don't know. <laughs> I watch this channel, you know, one of my favourite channels on YouTube. I've, I've, I've watched it for quite a while. It's called um, Beard Meats Food. He doesn't need no help from me. He's got like 2.6 million subscribers. He's absolutely flying. But when I was watching him like four years ago, I remember him hitting 50,000, 50k. And he made like a special video for 50k subs. So I'm on like nearly 35. So it's mad really when you think maybe maybe by the end of this year you never know fingers crossed bloody hell I might be on 50k subs and you never know where it's going to go from there but when I watch his channel he goes off to like America or Canada for two weeks and he goes around the different restaurants and cafes doing the food challenges that would be something I would be really interested in doing going to America or Canada and go to different states and, and stealth camp in different in different parts but I'm a million miles off that <laughs> I'm a million miles off that but yeah I take you just to answer just a little question don't I I end up going bloody arse ways to get a breakfast time but yeah <laughs> I would love to do that I would love to go abroad and do some stealth camping and, and what have you anyway <laughs> that's the end of that question guys you know what I'm like I start off saying it's a quick question and I end up talking shite for five minutes bring you back soon man dingoes <coughs> right
So I've just popped out for a quick slash garden. I'm going to show you what's around so you can see how much of an urban area that I'm in. So obviously you know the road is just behind that barrier. We're on the flyover or the overpass, whatever you want to call it. We've got the railway line down there. Our camped just down in that direction. So that building right in front of us there, that's a little supermarket. You should be able to see the sign there. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up. So behind little, you'll be able to see the McDonald's sign. So just over to the left there, you've got McDonald's. That building, just there. That's for, I think it's Frank's, where you buy your carpets and your hard flooring. Over there, there's another building, just there. That's like uh, building merchants. And then just beyond that, just down there, you've got like uh, Burger King, KFC, Greg's Bakery, Starbucks. You've got a B&M store over there. And all around here, there's hundreds and hundreds of houses more houses just over there and as you can see in the distance where the lights are you've got the city center of the stunning city of Sunderland you better believe you have Mandingos <laughs> one of the best cities in the world right okay then guys I'm gonna get back under my dodgy looking top finish me beer off me German beer have some more snackaroonies and then I might have a little chest warmer. Oh yes! You know what I'm talking about. Time for a little chess warmer. <laughs> oh, that's warming me right up there. Lovely jubbly. I've actually done two Waski reviews on Lefroig. I done one not so long ago. I can't remember what video it was. And then I done a review on it. I think it was like two or three years ago. One of my early ones. It's a it's a funny taste in Waski. It's quite nice. Remember to stick around Mandingo's later on for tonight's world famous Waski review. Ock Nagy blended scotch waski from the lost distilleries put that down there I'm going to sit and enjoy this and I want to say a big thank you to Nick Ball who sent me that waski he sent us the cock soup oh major whilst he sent us Yes, the beef jerky and a few more things. There was a few more things that I haven't even brought. Some more soup, some hot chocolates and other bits and pieces. Cheers Nick mate, you're a legend. 
Air matron. Right. Right, let's get some water boiled up for the soup. Should be enough. Right guys, that's the old cock soup popped in, the old pansexual, the old pansexual, oh yeah, we'll give that a couple of minutes till it starts bubbling away and then we'll add the chicken and the veg. That's nearly boiling. So let's add the chicken. Oh, missed with a bit. Doesn't matter. And now we'll also add the old veg dingo. Man dingoes. Is the same the do doing? That a stir. Stir the porridge. You know what I'm talking about. We will give that another couple of minutes, and it's happy dingoes. is just what you need on a chilly night a nice hot meal oh this will warm my body car right up mm. not bad and hot lovely chicken and veg with a lovely taste of salty cock <laughs> certainly do for me guys makes a change from Uncle Bensky Bates International Playboy Bunny Boiler Insurance with British Gas Lice but Uncle Ben's will make a comeback next week you better believe he will oh Tell you what, this is just what I needed. Mm. Lovely, jubbly.
when Mandan goes, I'm now going to say a massive thank you to all you unbelievable subscribers who have supported the Blot Outdoor Show this last week. For you to go out your way and buy me a coffee, it's absolutely fantastic and it's so kind of you. Everyone that watches the channel, cheers. Really appreciate it. But all you guys who have gone out your way and bought me a coffee, or two coffees or three coffees, some people buy even more. Everyone is. It's an absolute legend. And I want to say a massive thank you. And I want to say it. I really do. Appreciate it, guys. Honestly, without your help, I couldn't come out all the time and make these videos. So once again, thank you for supporting the Blood Outdoor Show. You absolute bunch of legends. There's your names down there, guys. Down there. I'm now going to sit and enjoy the rest of this meal. Cock soup. First time I've tried cock. To be honest, I never thought cock would be something I would enjoy. But, you know, you've got to try everything once. And to be honest, I'm, I think I'll try cock again. <laughs> That's enough of me talking shit. I'm going to finish this off. Thank you for supporting the Blood Outdoor Show, guys. Very much appreciated. Right. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know what time it is Mandingo's waski time and this is what we've got this week Ok Nagi Blended Scotch Waski made by the Lost Distilleries I want to say a massive thank you to Barry Homewood Cheers big Baz mate, much appreciated for getting me this Yep, so this is a distillery that was in Perthshire, in Bonnie, Scotland. It was open from, let me get this right, 1812 to 1911, something like that. I might be just off. Yep, but then it closed down and the Lost Distillery has brought this back to life. Let's get that open and let's get it poured in. The old famous cup dingo. Manding was. Oh, yeah. Okay, then. Let's get the old big Rooney in it. I'm getting a lovely. Oh. A lovely light floral smell about it. And I'm also getting. Oh, it's a lovely, nice, fresh barley smell. A tiny bit honey coming through there. And maybe the slightest hint of lemon zest. Just the slightest hint. Anyway, that's enough of the sniffing. Let's get on with the tears and rights. Mm. 
a nice fruity, like white grape taste. Very nice indeed. Mm. Now that honey's coming through now. It's not really strong, but I can definitely taste it on the old tongue dingo mandingos. Mm. A very soft smoke. Some whiskies are really smoky. That's got a little bit of smoke, but just a nice soft little bit. This, I think, is the third one I've had from the Lost Distilleries, and it's me favourite one so far. Lovely. I'm getting there. Really, really nice aftertaste there. I know you're going to think this is daft. It's just what I think. Yeah, a lovely, nice aftertaste of like custard, like a, the best way I can describe it is like a vanilla custard. Absolutely tremendous. Down the hatch. Mmm. Well, man, dingoes, that was absolutely top draw. Really enjoyed that. Ok, Nagi, blended Scotch whisky. So many flavours not coming through there. Really, really nice. I'm going to give that a big, fat 8.8 .8 out of 10 dingo man dingoes. You better believe I am. Top draw. There you go, guys. That's the end of this week's Waski with you. You know what I'm talking about. This is serious. Stealth coming. Rice. Hey folks, it's 12.30 and I've got to be up at 5.30 to go and pick little Mick up and get to work for seven so guys i'm gonna say good night i'm gonna get this bivy zipped up and try and get some sleep i'll see you mandingos first thing in the morning at coffee time you know makes sense good night guys see you in the morning good morning mandingos Five forty five. Nice fresh morning. Ooh, a little bit chilly. I was nice and warm inside the bivy all night. Oh, but as soon as I've came out. got to get packed up now because I've only got 45 minutes and I've got to go and pick little Mick up and go to work oh. Been a good camp, absolutely loved it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. All righty, I'm gonna get packed away. Bring your legends back in a minute. So there we go, folks. I'm all packed away. Put that scrap at the side. The scrap men might want to come and get it. <laughs> I'm 
Bags ready to put on. Got the bin diesel there with all my shite. It's now 6.22. Haven't got long before I start work, so I need to get cracking. It's only about a five minute, seven minute walk back to where I've got the van parked. The old John Claude van sexual. Oh, yep, okay. Let's get out of here. It's no big deal if anyone sees us now. It's more of a challenge getting in. Okay then my fan sexuals, I'm back at the old Van Dingo, I haven't got time to muck about, so guys, <coughs> if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, I've had a great time as usual, oh can I get my breath, I've got asthma, <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a rush job this morning, but it was worth it to get a video made for you guys for Sunday night. Leave a comment, I do read everyone, and if you haven't already subbed, you know what to do, man, dingoes. Hit that subscribe button. I will see you next week. You better believe I will. Right. Oh, uh, Mason.